Our Lady is there to help us and to guide us. I again turned to Our Lady to help me. Our Lady for me is the most perfect role model. The most incredible mentor. I trust her. I just feel incredibly blessed. My name is Michelle Ward. Um, I'm from County Leash. I live here with my husband Joseph and my child Isabella, she's two. I grew up in Leash. I came from a family that was, my mom in particular was strong in her faith. And so growing up, um, I believed in God and especially as a child. My childhood, I was full of joy and I had no inhibitions in life and I dreamt big dreams. I had a very happy childhood. Until I was about 12, I went through a really difficult time in school where my closest bunch of friends, there was basically a whole emotional and physical bullying went on. And um, that was extremely damaging and hurtful. And um, I suppose feeling the rejection and betrayal of that. When I came away from that whole situation and I moved into secondary school, I was really kind of searching and I was searching to belong and fit in. So kind of rebelled a lot, especially at home. I used to sneak out of the house at night. I was drinking from a really young age. Yeah, just lying to my parents and stealing it. And it was a really unhappy time throughout my teenage years in, in a lot of sense. Just really, I suppose, trying to find myself. And God didn't come into that picture until I was around 17. And that's when our whole family, I suppose, fell apart. And in particular, my mother was really hit with just such a sadness and hurt. And during that time, I really saw how she completely turned to Our Lady in particular. She just said the rosary and clung to her. Up until that point, I never understood why you would pray to Our Lady. I certainly hadn't got a relationship with Our Lady. Um, but seeing my mother and how much comfort it gave her during this incredibly hard time in our lives, it, it intrigued me and I was interested to know more. But then especially, I saw really the fruit of that prayer and how a situation in our family completely turned around. And for me, it was like witnessing a real miracle in our lives. As a teenager, I was around 18 and I started to pray to Mary, but it wasn't in a conventional way. It, it was in my own way. That kind of led me then um, to slowly have a relationship with Our Lady. But I was very much so caught in the world and like still involved in, in things that were really not good for me. Lovely lady dressed in blue, teach me how to pray. God was once your little boy Tell me what to say Did you lift him up sometimes Gently on your knee When I was living away from home up in Dublin City and I was at a point in my life where prayer just had gone out the window I'd stopped going to Mass I wasn't really interested in that anymore. I was just interested in going out and partying. And at the same time, I really fell into a real darkness and an extreme kind of depression in my life. Um, it got so dark at one particular point that it, it, I just had to cry out to God for, to help me. One night I just cried out and the next day I heard from a girl I hadn't heard from in a long time. She was probably the only young Christian I knew and she invited me to go on a pilgrimage. It was to Poland at the time, and it was out there with other young people. We were helping kids in orphanages. We were working in an old folks home, but it just really opened up my heart and got me out of that kind of depression, that inward looking phase I was in. But I got the opportunity to go to Mezhigoria and that's when everything changed for me. I'd heard about Mezhigoria through my mother. 
She had told me it changed her life, but I didn't know of any other young people going. But there was a desire within me to go there because I knew I needed something to change. There was no joy in my heart and there was something completely missing. And so this desire to go to Mejigoria just came all of a sudden when I was around 22. And all of a sudden I heard about this youth group going when I was in Dublin and I called into the Blessed Sacrament Chapel. And I said, yes, yeah, sign me up straight away. So I went out with a bunch of young people I'd never met. It was world, uh, it was youth week out there in, in Mejigoria. And when I was out there, I just had the most incredible experience. I really opened up my heart, but it was true confession and true turning to Our Lady to guide me, to help me in that time. And over the course of the week and through that confession, everything changed for me. I felt an experience of God's love that I'd never experienced before. The peace and the joy that came into my heart. And all of a sudden I felt like the world looked completely different. And I just couldn't get enough of God. There was such a hunger there to know more about God and for prayer and especially the rosary. I'd fallen in love with the rosary through my time in Mejgoria. And I understood it for the first time that it was really a meditation on Jesus's life. And it's all about bringing us closer to Jesus. And that's Mary's role as a mother is like loving us so much and holding us by the hand and leading us closer and closer to her son. And that's exactly what happened to me. Well, when I came back from Ejigoria, I actually set off to Los Angeles because I had a dream to be an actress and that opportunity came available. But you could say I was still in that kind of honeymoon period with God and everything was rosy and I was praying a lot and all these things are falling into place. I met a girl from Ireland out there who we got a place together and she also had a huge interest in her faith and her relationship with the Lord. And we really supported each other in that. So we were out there in Los Angeles, the two Irish girls, and we would say the rosary in our bedroom. She introduced me to going to daily mass and this opened up a world for me that I'd never experienced. I'd never had really a friend who was my own age who had an interest in God and a relationship with God. So it was a very incredible time. But then things kind of went downhill when my friend Mary moved back to Ireland and I was left out there in LA. I didn't have that support and I got caught up in, of course, all the lures of Hollywood and everything like that. And I just at the same time, when I didn't have that support in my own prayer life, it was when I was really, again, going through kind of a struggling, challenging time that I again turned to Our Lady to help me and to show me the way. And I just started to get a change in my heart to go home to Ireland, even though I had a visa for another few years to stay there. I just had this new desire just come into my heart to go home to Ireland. And it was very scary because I felt like I was leading, leaving my dream for acting aside and saying goodbye to that. But I really surrendered to God for the first time properly there. And I just said, true Our Lady, I said, yes, God, I want your will in my life. No matter what that is, if that means saying goodbye to that dream to be an actress, and when I went home, things got so much better. Um, I went out to Mejigori again, and I met a group of young people from Ireland who were involved in different prayer groups and retreats. And I start going along to these in Ireland, these different retreats and prayer groups with other young people. I still lived a normal life as a 20 year old. I still had my friends from home and from around Dublin who weren't interested in their faith like I was but it was having that support of friends who did and these new friends I'd met and this community. And I started to really grow and that interest and that desire to grow and grow. So that's when I decided to go back and study theology and know more about my faith. And that brought me into the line of work that I eventually got into, which is um, leading school retreats. I'm around Leinster working with a group called Antobernua and is the most incredible work to be able to do that, to go out and to witness and to share what God has done in my life. That Our Lady is there to help us and to guide us and to bring us closer to Jesus. Mary, I entrust myself totally to you. My body, my soul, my good.
in my own life, I'd always got a huge desire to be a wife and a mother. And that was like a deep desire in my own heart. And, you know, through my 20s and early 30s, I wasn't seeming to meet the man that was for me, my husband. And I just kept praying to Our Lady for him. And I met Joe when I was 34. And that was such an amazing time. And we went on and we got married in 2018. When we got married, we got pregnant. Um, we were married a couple of months and we got pregnant. And it was Mother's Day and we went to um, a nearby church. And there was a new priest celebrant celebrating the mass. And I, hadn't re I didn't recognize him. I was like, I wonder who that is. It was a visiting priest. And during the whole mass, um, I just kept thinking about knock and I couldn't get knock out of my head. I only actually started to go to knock in my 20s. I, I can't remember ever being there as a child. But along with Medjugorje, I just found such an incredible peace in knock. And that's my relationship with Our Lady. You know, you don't, I, I realize I don't have to be any particular place, but knock and, and Medjugorje brought me closer to her and to the Lord really through her. So I couldn't stop thinking, I was at this mass, I couldn't stop thinking about knock and going to knock. And then at the homily, the priest introduced himself that he was the parish priest of Knock. And I turned to my husband and I said, we have to go to Knock. I just knew I was being called to go there again really soon. We found out a couple of weeks later that we miscarried and I knew that I had to go to knock to do with that miscarriage and also to do with getting pregnant again. I just knew that's what Our Lady was calling me to do. So we, we took a trip up that summer then and we went into the Basilica for Mass and the first reading was a reading from the Old Testament where the angels um, appeared to Abraham and told him, tell your wife Sarah by this time next year she will have a child. And I just start crying in the middle of mass because I knew that message was for me. And that was a promise from the Lord to me that I would have a child uh, by that this time next year. And I wrote it down when I came home in my diary. I was so certain um, that this was a promise by God. We did go ahead and we got pregnant and we had Isabella. After studying theology, I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I always had such an interest with working with young people, with teenagers. This actually became apparent to me when I was in Los Angeles, funnily enough. And when I was out there, I had, I just got involved as being a bit of a mentor to other young um, girls who were teenagers and helping them out when they were really struggling. So this made me think maybe I'll get, be interested in being a teacher. And so I actually decided to teach and I became a religion teacher in Crumlin. And um, it was there that I just absolutely got so much out of meeting these young people, just being able to, I suppose, share with them. And I just loved it. I was teaching about two years. It was kind of a stressful enough time. And, um, but one day I was driving back from where I was teaching in Crumlin to where I was living in Maynooth at the time. And I was driving my car um, I was in the fast lane, I was doing 120 kilometers, and all of a sudden my vision just kind of went and I got all blurry and I couldn't see. I still could move my body, but I just tried to veer into the, not knowing where I was going, and I veered the car into the ditch pretty much, rode off the car, climbed out of the car, and the first person to pull up was a priest who I had met for the first time the night before, and he got me out of the car. And for me, that was just a complete miracle. I survived that, that I didn't crash into any other car. And I really just turned to God during that time because I just didn't know where this was coming from. I went for all medical tests and everything and everything came clear. But it actually, through that experience, I just completely turned more and more to uh, prayer at that time. And it was one time in adoration when I just went in there and I felt this incredible presence of Jesus. and I. I just saw him so close to me and I felt like I was like about a five-year-old sitting on his lap and being comforted by him. 
and being told that I'm loved. And Song of Songs came into my into my mind so clearly and there was just so much healing and so much tears around that time. And from then on, I didn't get those dizzy spells anymore. Mary. Our Lady is such an important part of my life. Even on our wedding day, myself and Joe, we inserted into our ceremony a kind of a part where we consecrated our marriage and life to her because she's done so much for me um, throughout my journey and will continue to do so. Our Lady for me is just the most perfect role model I could ever desire or want as a woman to look up to, um, to be like and um, to help me ultimately, you know, get closer to, to Jesus, her son. So I'm so grateful for all that she has done in my life and continues to do and will in the future. And um, I know when I just keep close to her that all will be well and all is good. Mother Mary to me is, she is the most incredible mother first and foremost and she's always with me and guiding me um, along the right path and giving me the strength that I need to say yes to God. Through all the difficulties in life, um, the most incredible mentor and role model I could ask for. So I just know that when I give everything to her, I am in the best hands possible. I trust her. I just feel incredibly blessed that she has uh, called me into relationship ultimately with her, with, with Jesus, her son. And I just know that I'm completely safe by giving her everything and trusting my life to her, my family to her, my every day. Yeah, if there is anything, I would just encourage you to not be afraid to turn to her because she loves each of us so, so much more than we can ever imagine. And she only wants the best, the absolute best for her children, for us um, and best for our lives and to bring us closer to God. Our Lady of Fatima will go down as the greatest of Marian apparitions in history. It all began on May 13th in the year 1917 when three shepherd children, Lucia dos Santos, her cousins Francisco Marto and Jacinta Marto witnessed a vision of the Virgin Mary standing in front of them in the fields of Cova de Iria. They received messages of peace and of prayer, and they even saw a vision of hell. Many thousands of people began to gather in that area, and they saw the children there seeing the Virgin Mary, the Blessed Mother of God. These messages were distributed to the faithful, made it all around the world, making Fatima the greatest of all Marian devotions. The greatest miracle that happened related to Fatima was the Great Sun Miracle, which occurred on October 13th, in which the thousands of people there who had been gathered to hear those messages of Our Lady and to witness a miracle. drenched in a rainstorm and they looked up to the sky and they saw the sun growing in size and spinning and descending on them. Was it mass hallucination? I'm not quite sure. There were the people there who were drenched previously were instantaneously dried and people witnessed this miracle from many miles away. Our Lady of Fatima goes down as one of the greatest apparitions in church history, and Pope John Paul II beatified two of
two of those visionaries and released the third secret of Fatima that related to the assassination of a bishop in white. He, of course, relates that to his own assassination attempt on the feast of Our Lady of Fatima, taking the bullet from that assassination and placing it in the crown of Our Lady of Fatima. Our Lady of Fatima will go down as the greatest Marian apparition in the history of the Catholic Church. Shalom world, tune into God's love story.